Greetings all, welcome back to another video. This is Indigo Blackbird and today we're gonna to be talking about things that I wish I knew before I gave birth. Let's get into the list. Something that's really important that's often overlooked is thinking about what's gonna happen after birth. So planning for your postpartum care, and whether that means hiring a doula or a birth keeper, if you're gonna have family come out of town and stay with you for a bit, or if your neighbors are gonna cook you some meals so you can freeze them. Wanna have a plan so you know what is gonna happen in your household so that you can relax and rest and spend time bonding with baby and making sure that you're just in recovery mode because most people don't think about this like if you're someone who's accustomed to making dinner and being that person who keeps or maintains the household then you're not gonna have the same energy you may not feel well it's not really that great for you to be on your feet and in a lot of traditions it's custom for that first 40 days for mom to be in bed like literally in bed you can look up cuarentena, which is the Mexican tradition, and there are some Chinese traditions as well, uh, and all over the world, but I don't remember the name of the Chinese one right now. If I found that out, I will link that in the video <laughs> in the description box below. Yeah, planning for postpartum is extremely important. And a lot of people don't know that women can be mistreated during their pregnancy and after. The rates of aftercare is honestly atrocious in this country. People talk about the birth rates, mortality rates, but there are a lot of women who never really recover even decades later after giving birth. They still have urinary incontinence. They have prolapse they never dealt with. Sex is not as pleasurable for them. The uterus never went back in the right position. So all these things add up and it's important and imperative to make that time in postpartum care one that's efficient, effective, and that will benefit you in the long run. Because you don't want to put too much pressure on your uterus after you give birth because that can lead to further problems and it also will affect your sex life which is important to a lot of people but not to as many people i think as it should be in your sex life also reflects the quality of energy that you have right because your sex center is your energetic center so it's not just whether or not you want to have kids again in the future it's more about your overall wellness and how you feel connected to this world and what you feel you're here to do your uterus is a very important part and even if you don't have a uterus anymore that center is really significant it is the place where we go and commune with ourselves and the creator it is what is regulating a big part of what's regulating our our body because all the hormones get sent to and from there in order to create and maintain this vessel that we've chosen for this incarnation so you really want to take great care of it how you're treated during birth and after birth can affect you for years it can affect your marriage it can affect your relationships with other people it can affect the way that you view yourself and healthcare um depending on whether or not you were in a hospital or if you get birth at home etc okay so don't try and be the super mom who does everything and who's strong and snapbacks and who doesn't need anyone it's not a bragging right it's a sign that you need more support and you're trying to prove that you can do it all on your own and you may maybe you can but there are other consequences that will happen later and it can be exhausting like you just give birth to a baby and then you just go back to doing things like some women are okay with that like I had to do that, but because I didn't have a choice and no one else was taking care of me and I didn't have the support to do that. Like I was told, oh, look, you just had a baby and now you're like acting, you know, you're doing things like nothing happened. And I'm like, that's a sign that you guys aren't stepping up. I shouldn't be cooking my own meals like the next day. You know what I mean? I should have space to just lay down and rest and focus on breastfeeding. But because people are ignorant, and because I didn't, you know, have the best relationship with the people I was staying with at that time as far as them understanding my viewpoints, um, I was kind of left in that situation where I had to take care of myself. So I don't want you to think that if, you're, if you live alone and you're a single mom or you don't have a healthy relationship with your family, you don't have a lot of friends or that kind of support that like you're going to be in trouble or there's any kind of reprimand it's just seeking out alternative sources in fact you may be the best person to seek out a doula there are doulas also who do pro bono services so if finances are a concern for you see if you can find a postpartum doula who will help you for free or who will take medicaid or some kind of insurance there are so many options and um you deserve to have someone to look after you to take care of you it can take up to a year, even longer, to heal from postpartum. A lot of people think it's six weeks and back to work or whatever. It's absolutely criminal. It's not fair. The body is not ready. Oftentimes, people are having sex again way too early. They are weightlifting and they are 
being super active, I tend to wait at least six months before I really start being super active again, just to give time for my uterus to get back into place, to allow my pelvic floor to build up naturally uh, through the things that I do. I'll do gentle yin exercises like yoga, uh, asanas, and I'll do some pelvic floor exercises that are gentle is when your abdominal walls separate in between. So you'll be able to take your fingers and fill a gap in between your abs. That just, is just due to it spreading when you're pregnant because the baby takes up all the room. <laughs> so naturally, when baby's no longer there, you still have that wideness and that over time we'll get back together, but you need to do exercises that are gentle and effective enough for that specific part of your body. So yeah, prolapse can occur. My last two births, I had a slight prolapse, which is natural because you have more pressure on your belly uh, and, you're, and you're carrying more weight. And so your pelvic floor may weaken and it can be due to things like lifestyle. There's so many other factors too. So you want to be sure that you're in a position to do that so that you don't end up making things worse. Like if you're, if you just return to weightlifting and then you have prolapse and then all of a sudden you're rushed into some kind of surgery or something to repair something when you, it wasn't really necessary and there were other ways you could have taken care of your body in the meantime that would have been just as effective if not more beneficial for you you may not have an interest in sex anymore you may feel disconnected you have a partner and you feel like pressure to have sex with them maybe that's something you need to explore in your relationship and set a boundary there and communicate to you that you don't feel the same way because there can be an assumption after birth that you're just the same person but you're not a lot just happened to you you can still be processing things and figuring out who you are how you feel and that could take some time that could also take up to a year or longer right um because your personality shifts your beliefs shift based on again how you were treated how your experience went who you were around how your body's feeling if you're allowed to rest right because remember you're having hormones come through your afterbirth you're having that dopamine surge the oxytocin you'll be on this high for a while as you breastfeed you're releasing more hormones to create more of that milk and the bond with your baby which is super amazing like you can't really describe that in that many words but these things also can fluctuate and given your circumstances you may and maybe even not you could experience postpartum depression you could have lows all of a sudden and just feel kind of detached from life you may not feel connected with your baby and that's fine it may not just be happy all the time you just may not want to be around anyone that is a sign that you may need some more support from someone and if you can just focus on being and resting and having the resources which is why i love postpartum doulas because they can offer you teas they can offer you acupressure and massage techniques they can teach you breathing techniques they can do closing rituals and ceremonies for you to help to bring and integrate your spirit back into your body do spirit cleanses, do baby bath cleanses and i do these things as well if you're interested in a service with me i'm going to link my website in the bio you can fill out my contact form and we can schedule a free consultation and talk and get to know each other and see if we'd be a good fit and you can ask me any of your questions um you can always ask me any questions anyway in the comment section or if you follow me on my socials you can link with me there yeah, lots of things about you change and another thing i wish i knew is that you don't need a bunch of stuff and honestly i was pretty good about that i was with someone who was minimalist for a while and i wasn't becoming one myself so that really was a great influence on me but i didn't feel the need to get a crib and a diaper bin and a wipe warmer and all these things like I had a lot of clothes sourced to me that were donated from my, my daughter's older sister uh, and from neighbors who had daughters who were outgrowing their clothes so that was a great and incredible gift for me and I had so many clothes I didn't, I didn't need to really buy clothes and with like diapers I had some cloth diapers in the beginning and then I had kind of switched to pampers and regular diapers to kind of test it out because I was living with someone who had a lack mentality and I understand like you have to pay for electricity so if you're not someone who's equipped or ready or prepared to have to wash things by hand and if you don't have enough cloth diapers to get you through the day without having to resort to a regular diaper then that's something you'd have to consider but the cloth diapers are really effective of not having to um, buy as many diapers in the long term but you do end up using a little bit more water and um, so to clean things but you don't need a bunch of stuff like you can really do without a diaper pail like people act like baby poop is equivalent to like elephant dung it's not it doesn't smell like that it's really small you could get away with putting it in a regular trash can honestly um when it comes to toys they are pretty 
great with minimal toys. In fact, I know Montessori method uses less toys, but encourages them to use less toys in multiple ways to expand their imagination, their creativity, and to figure out what to do in their own minds. So um, you really don't need a lot of things, but the essentials are the onesies, like when a baby's first born, they don't need a lot of clothes because they're going to outgrow them really quickly. So just plan things out ahead of time. Spend that money on your postpartum care. You can spend that money on paying for your your birth. Um, unless you decide to have a free birth or when there's nothing involved or your insurance is going to cover all of it. Just thinking about budgeting, which is my What's next thing. Sort out your finances raise funds clean. or talk to insurance about the best coverage for you and for billing when you're raising your finances you want to figure out what platform you're going to use how much do you need to get a doula to get a midwife to have all the food or the sources that you're going to need after you give birth and you can use a birth registry actually to plan all these things now a lot of birth registries have the option where you can list out what you're raising funds for so you can say midwife fund or you can say, you know, we just want donations instead of you buying gifts. And you can make it very clear what you need and have it listed to the public or to your friends or whoever and let them have access to that. You can update it and change it. I ended up keeping my registry even after I gave birth. And for birthdays, I would like just update things for my children so that family could know what we need and have a better chance of getting the things that we actually want. So it, it's a way to encourage you to ask for what you need and be an advocate for yourself and you could talk to your spouse or whomever you're going through this journey with as well unless you're by yourself or with your doula to figure out how to do this something else that i wish i remembered was remembering that you're in control during birth so much is going on and the benefit of having an advocate have support and so you don't have to think about everything that's going on while you're in that process because birth is calling for you to be present and to be focused on the moment at hand and if you're having to think about telling someone no or setting a boundary and doing this and that it's really distracting and it can frustrate you and slow your labor and make you shut down so having a doula to be there to remind you of the things that you wanted is really really helpful honestly because the first time when I gave birth that I had a doula versus when I didn't, the second time I had birth, I realized that I knew so much about birth even as a doula, but even during the process, I forgot about things. Like I it didn't come to the forefront of my mind because I'm so involved in the process. The last thing you need to do is to accept what you truly feel to get the most out of your experience. So if you're experiencing intense contractions and you just want to rush and escape, like explore where that is happening in your life. Like you can make whatever decision you want, but if you want to get the most out of the experience, facing head on all that comes up for you is going to help you to transform and grow and release things. You're going to end up, bless you, bless you. You're going to end up on a totally different timeline than when you started. You'll learn more about yourself than you ever thought you could do. You'll be able to push through that literally to push through that or relax through that and surrender and to meet parts of yourself that have so much to tell you because birth tells you so much about yourself and your baby is on this journey with you so that's the first moment where you show up for them and yourself and you never forget your birth story so you know learning how to flow with the waves and the surges and each moment and if you need to cry or if you need to wail if you need to be silent and reflect if you need people to be away from you or if you just need more support like more touch remembering that you have a voice that you can use and advocate for and that everyone there works for you so thank you for watching this video i really hope it was helpful i know it got a little chaotic at the end if there's something that you wished you knew before you gave birth Comment this below. Share what it is that you felt was the most useful part of your pregnancy or your birth that you could have done without. Peace.